Loading a huge terrain when your game starts up can easily make the loading time feel long and frustrating to the player. Instead of loading everything before the player can start moving around, we might consider loading while the player is engaging with the parts we've already loaded. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can divide our voxel trade into smaller chunks, which we can then load one at a time using multiple threads. The project files for this video are available through selected tiers on Patreon. And now let's get started. Currently, my project generates my terrain using a single script attached to a Mesh Instant 3D node. If you need help setting up something like this, then go watch the previous videos on my Voxel Terrain playlist. But if you already know how to create a custom Voxel Mesh using Array Mesh in Godot, then you should be fine to move forward. Instead of rendering our world using one single mesh, we'll be dividing our world into smaller chunks. And each chunk will then have its own mesh. What size these chunks should be may vary depending on your project. In this video, I'll be dividing our world into cube-shaped chunks, but you can also use tall chunks like this if you like. So, First, we need a class for our chunks. Since the player should be able to potentially collide with every chunk, I'm making the root node a static body 3D. We then also need a collision shape 3D for the collision and a mess instance a 3D for the rendering. This is all very similar to what we've been using to create the terrain previously. I'm also renaming and then attaching the mess instance script we've been using to create our terrain so far. And then I also edit this where it's needed so it matches the node structure in our new chunk class. Finally, we want to make sure that everything still works. So let's add a chunk to our world, make a few edits to the world script, and make sure that we still have a material for the chunk and an array mesh for each mesh instance 3D. Right now, the world script is generating our terrain data, but I want our chunks to be responsible for their own data. This will make it easier to add and remove blocks later. So let's add a new method to our chunk script called generate data. We need a chunk size, a maximum height, and a noise node to generate our data. In this video, we'll be generating our terrain using a height map. So we can just go through all the possible X and Z coordinates and create a height value using the noise. There are a lot of fun algorithms to explore when it comes to procedural terrain generation, but for now I'm just using this expression to get the height at a 2D position. If procedural terrain generation is something you'd like me to make a few videos on, then please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so if the height is smaller than the Y position of the chunk, then we know that this part of our chunk is above the terrain and we can just continue. We also need to map the terrain height onto the local coordinates of this chunk. This can be done by subtracting the chunk's Y position from the height. Finally, we can create the voxels required within this chunk for this X Z position. For now, we are still just using colors to represent the voxels. Back in our world script, we then remove the code for generating the terrain data. Instead, we just call the generate data method on our chunk before we generate the mesh. To get the height map I'm going for, I'm also setting the frequency of the noise 
to 0 0.003 here. Now we can also remove the data input to the generate mesh method and update the method to use the new voxels array instead. Again, let's test to see how this works. At some point, you might want to separate the data from the rendering and keep these in different data structures in a chunk manager. This all depends on your project. But for now, we'll just keep both in our chunk class. Now that we have a single chunk working, it's time to create a chunk manager that will keep track of our chunks and decide which chunk to load when. The chunk manager can just be of type node. First, let's move the noise resource into the chunk manager as this is now where our chunks will be built. We'll set the noise type and frequency in our ready method. We also need exported variables for the color array, world dimensions, the chunk size, and the noise seed. Let's also clean up the world script and remove its ready method. Before we start generating the chunks for our world, we need to know how many chunks our world is going to be divided into. Now, this is only required for a finite world. We can look into infinite terrain in another episode. I'm creating a vector 3 variable for this and computing the numbers in the ready method by dividing the dimensions with the chunk size. Please note that this only works correctly if the dimensions are divisible by the chunk size. You can change the solution so this isn't a restriction, but I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to do this if you need it. Now we can create a new method that will generate our chunks. Here we can just go through all the chunk positions and create a new chunk. We need to be able to instance the chunk scene, so I'm preloading this into a new variable. The distance between two chunks is equal to the chunk size, and this is used to compute the position of each chunk. Now we can add the new chunk as a child of the manager and generate its data and mesh. Please note that the order of the last parts here is important. The ready method in our chunk is called when the chunk is added to the tree, and we need this before we can generate our mesh. Let's call our new method from the ready method, remove the chunk from our world scene, and add a chunk manager instead. And see what happens when we run the project now. Okay, we have a few things happening here. First, we have a bunch of errors when we try to commit some of the chunk meshes. This is basically just because we're trying to commit an empty mesh. To fix this, we just need to only generate a mesh if a voxel dictionary for a chunk isn't empty. The second problem is that all our chunks are now identical, and this is not what we want. This is actually caused by two things. First, we forgot to add the chunk's position to the local coordinates we use to generate the height noise. To fix this, we can create a new vector 3 for the global position we're looking at, and then use this to generate the noise. And 
Secondly, I forgot that array mesh is of course a resource and resources are not unique between instances in Godot. So when we create a new mesh for a chunk, we're actually setting the mesh for all of our chunks. To fix this, I just don't create an array mesh in the inspector menu. Instead, we can create the array mesh for each chunk from the chunks ready method. Now, a new array mesh will be created for every single chunk. Our chunk manager is now dividing our world into smaller chunks, but it still loads everything at once before we're allowed into the game. So let's see how we can move our world generation into multiple threads. In this video, I'm showing you how simple multithreading works. This means that our threads won't be changing data that's used by other threads. We can look into how we can share data safely across threads in another video. To use multiple threads to load our terrain, we first need to change our generate chunks method a bit. It will need a position for where the first chunk is going to be generated. This position should then be added to the position for each chunk. We also need to compute how many chunks in each direction the thread should generate. I'm going to use four threads, so I'm dividing the world into four parts. As always, we want to test that everything still works before moving on. So I'm calling the method from position 0.0.0. .0. This should create part of the same terrain as before, still using a single thread. Now let's see if we can generate our terrain using four threads. When we are creating a new thread, we should always make sure that we clean up properly by making sure that the wait to finish method is called on each thread. But if we do this right after we start the thread, we still won't be able to get into our world and move around while the terrain is loaded. Instead, we'll be waiting for the thread to finish generating its chunks. This is why I start by creating an array of loading threads. Then in the Godot exit tree method, we can go through the threads and call wait to finish. In our ready method, we can then start each of the four threads. The argument should be the name of the method we want the thread to run. And we can use the bind method to add any arguments needed for the method. Now, let's see what happens. Well, this clearly doesn't work. Remember that I said we would only be using simple multithreading? This is kind of the exception and an example of how fast multithreading can get complicated. Generating the data for the chunks in separate threads is safe and fine. But Interacting with the scene tree is not thread safe at all. To make this work, we need to defer our add child call. This also means that it won't be called right away, and thus we'll now have problems when we want to generate the mesh two lines down, since we need the ready method of the chunk to be run before we can commit the mesh. To fix this, we'll move the call to the commit mesh method to the chunks ready method. Remember to check if the voxel data is empty before doing this. Now we're generating a chunk by first creating the chunk data, then the mesh, and finally the chunk is added as a child of the chunk manager 
using a deferred call. If you want to learn more about Threat Safety in Godot, please go check out the ThreatSafe API page in the documentation. I've left a link in the description to where you can find this. Now, our terrain is loaded using four separate threads, and we can move around in our world while this happens. In some cases, using multiple threads like this might be a good idea, and I've used it in this video to better visualize how chunking and multithreading works. However, generally I would recommend just using a single extra thread for loading the terrain, instead of the four we're using here. The loading might seem a bit slow on my old PC here, and there really is a lot of ways we can still optimize this. Maybe we only create collision shapes for the chunks that are close to the player, or maybe we could optimize our meshing algorithm using greedy meshing or something else, or by moving it to C++. Right now, the chunks are loaded in an order based on their global position. But wouldn't it be smart if the load order was based on the distance to where the player enters the world? This is possible, of course. And we can also change the loading order during runtime. However, this requires sharing of data between threads and thus requires an introduction to a bit more advanced multithreading. But please let me know if this is something you'd like to know more about. And that was all for this episode. What direction do you think I should move this project in next? Should we look at infinite terrain and chunk off and offloading? Or is it maybe time to add and remove blocks? Or maybe you want me to add something else to this voxel project next? I hope you liked this video, and remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you want to see more like this in the future. Bye!